Ever see, um, you know those mother ducks with their little ducklings all following behind? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, today we're going on a deep dive to discover how Colombian ground squirrels have a similar way of uh, keeping their little ones safe. Okay. We're going to be looking at a paper by James W. Capel from way back in 1980. Oh, wow. It was published in a journal called Mammalia and describes this fascinating following behavior. Cool. So uh, what makes this paper so interesting? Well, what's really cool is that couple was actually able to observe a whole sequence of events yeah. that led to this uh, following behavior. Okay, so like what kind of setup are we talking about here? So couple was observing this colony of ground squirrels in Montana. Right. And each squirrel had been like individually marked so he could identify each one. Oh, wow. And he was really focusing on this one mother squirrel who had a litter of six pups. Six pups? Wow. Yeah. And these pups were about 40 days old. So they were old enough to be above ground. Okay. But they were still dependent on their mother for, you know, food and protection. Sure. And as part of his research, Copel had set out some of these live traps called gen traps. Okay, and so these traps are what kind of triggered this whole following behavior. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, he noticed that the mother squirrel was interacting with the traps oh, really? in a way that suggested that she saw them as a threat. Mm. Like she would even try to move them. Wow. So she was not messing around when it came to her pups. Not at all. She clearly wasn't taking any chances. So what did she do? Did she, like, round up her pups and just point them in the right direction or what? Well, it's actually a bit more intricate than that. Oh, really? Copel describes this following behavior as a whole series of very specific actions. Okay. So the first thing the mother squirrel does is she starts grooming her pups. So like a little cuddle time before they make their escape? It's actually more than just a cuddle. Okay. Grooming is a crucial bonding behavior. Oh. When they groom each other, it releases all these feel-good hormones mm -hmm. and strengthens that connection between the mother and pups. Right. And it might even, like, prime the pups to be more receptive to her next move. Interesting. So what happens next? Okay, so after the grooming session, the mother moves a short distance away, uh -huh. and she assumes this very distinctive, like, follow me posture. Okay. So her hindquarters are down, her forequarters are up, her forelimbs are extended, her body's all arched, and her head is turned back towards the pups. Wow, what a visual. Yeah, almost like she's bowing to them. I can just picture it, this tiny squirrel mom striking a pose. Yeah. So the pups see this and they know to follow. Right. It's amazing you know how animals can communicate so effectively without any spoken language. Right. So the pups respond to this visual cue and they follow her to the new location. Hmm. And she repeats this sequence several times, and she ends up leading her pups about 140 meters to a burrow. Wow, 140 meters. That's quite the journey for those little legs. It is. But did all the pups always follow right away, or were there any, like, stragglers? Not always. Sometimes the pups weren't as quick to catch on. Maybe they were distracted or just feeling a little rebellious. Classic teenager squirrel behavior. Uh-huh. Yeah, so in those cases, the mother would go back and groom them again. Okay. And sometimes she would even scold them a little bit, like a nudge to get with the program. Okay, so she's not just a loving mom, but also a bit of a drill sergeant. Yeah, exactly when she needs to be. I wonder, is this follow-me posture unique to Colombian ground squirrels, or do other species do it too? That's a great question. And while similar postures have been observed in other ground squirrel species, oh, okay. even some tree squirrels, mm. the specific context and the way Colombian ground squirrels use it seem to be quite distinct. Interesting. And did Capel notice if like the pup's responsiveness changed with age? Yeah, that's what's really fascinating. He observed that as the pups got older, they were less likely to immediately follow. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, as they get older, maybe they become a little less reliant on mom's every cue. Exactly. They're starting to explore their independence mm -hmm. and might be a little more hesitant in unfamiliar situations. Uh, like they're developing their own personalities. Yeah. It's like they're testing boundaries. So this is not just about blind obedience. Mm -hmm. There's actually like a developmental aspect to it as well. Exactly. I'm curious to learn more about like why this following behavior evolved in the first place. Right. It seems like a lot of work for the mother squirrel. Yeah, so this is where Keppel's insights into the evolutionary significance of this behavior are really important. Okay. You see, smaller rodents often carry their young in their mouths right. when danger is present. Yeah. But as pups grow larger, this becomes much more difficult. Yeah, I can't imagine a mom squirrel carrying six fully grown pups in her mouth. Exactly. So this following behavior is like a brilliant adaptation for relocation. 
uh-huh. when carrying is no longer practical. Okay. It allows the mother to conserve energy and stay agile right. while still ensuring the safety of her young. It's like nature's solution to a logistical problem. Yeah, exactly. But why go through all this trouble? Why not just let the pups fend for themselves once they're big enough? Well, remember how the mother reacted to those traps? Yeah. That really highlights her strong motivation to protect her young. Right. Especially when she perceives threats. Yeah. This following behavior isn't just about convenience. It's about survival. Hmm. In a world full of predators staying close to mom and following her lead. Right. Dramatically increases the pup's chances of making it to adulthood. It really shows the power of a mother's love. Absolutely. And the lengths she'll go to to keep her offspring safe. Yeah. It makes you wonder, could this following behavior be more than just a safety mechanism? Yeah, could it be a building block for something more complex? That's a fascinating thought. Yeah. I guess we'll have to wait for part two to find out more. Uh Uh-huh, exactly. Welcome back to our deep dive into following behavior in Colombian ground squirrels. It's amazing how much we can learn from just one research paper. Right. Cup's observations really paint a vivid picture of these squirrels. Yeah, and you know, his research was conducted back in 1980. Oh, wow. Like a time capsule. Yeah. Giving us a glimpse into the lives of these fascinating creatures. So true. It makes you wonder how much more we've learned about ground squirrels since then. I know a lot, and yet there's still so much we don't know that's the beauty of science. Yeah. There's always more to discover. Speaking of discoveries, we talked about how this following behavior works. Right. I'm curious about the uh, how the pups know where to go. Is it just their mom scent they're following or something more? Well, couple believed that vision played a key role. Oh. Remember that distinct follow me posture? Yeah. He suggested that this visual cue is what primarily guides the pups. So like a silent signal. Exactly. It's like their own secret squirrel language. How do they learn this language? Are they born knowing what that posture means, or is it something they learn over time? Well, Couples' paper doesn't really go into detail about the developmental aspect. Okay. But it's likely a combination of instinct and learning. Mm. Think about it. A baby squirrel emerging from the burrow would instinctively stay close to mom. Right. For food and safety. Yeah. That instinct is probably hardwired. Like a built-in survival mechanism. Exactly. But as they grow and explore, they learn to recognize and respond to specific cues from their mom. Okay. Like the follow me posture. Got it. So it's fascinating how nature and nurture kind of work together. It is. It's a delicate dance. So we've covered the visual cues. Yeah. But what happens when a pup gets distracted or wanders off? Does mom have other ways to keep them in line? Well, Keppel observed that the mother squirrel often used grooming to bring her pups back. Oh, interesting. He even describes instances where she'd groom them right before assuming the follow me posture. Oh, so it's like a little reminder. Like, hey, remember how much you love this stick with me? Precisely. It reinforces that bond and encourages them to follow. Yeah. And if that fails, Keppel noted that she would sometimes resort to scolding. Oh, really? Especially if they weren't following quickly enough. Tough love squirrel style. (laughs) Exactly. But, (laughs) you know, in a world full of predators, it makes sense. Yeah. It's about survival. She's preparing them for the realities of life outside the burrow. Exactly. And we talked about older pups being less responsive to the follow me posture. Yeah. Any insights into why that might be? Kipla offered a couple of possibilities. Okay. One is that as pups mature... They become more independent and mm-hmm. less reliant on their mother for guidance. Yeah. They're exploring testing boundaries uh-huh. and may not always be eager to follow mom's every move. So like a squirrel teenager asserting their independence. Exactly. Another possibility is that older pups become more hesitant and anxious in unfamiliar environments. Mm-hmm. They've spent most of their lives around the burrow. Yeah. So venturing out can be daunting. Right. This newfound awareness might make them less inclined to blindly follow. That makes sense. A healthy dose of skepticism mixed with a growing sense of independence. Exactly. And it's likely beneficial for their survival. Yeah. After all, to thrive in the wild, you need to think for yourself and assess risks. Right. So mom is preparing them for the challenges of the real world. Exactly. This leads me back to something you mentioned earlier. The idea that this behavior could be a stepping stone to something more complex. Yes. The potential for following behavior to be a precursor to more complex social structures 
is fascinating. Yeah. Think about it even in its simplest form. It involves communication, even if it's primarily visual. Uh -huh. Mom signals and the pups respond. Right, like a primitive form of communication. Exactly. As these pups grow and interact, this basic signaling could evolve into more complex forms. Oh, okay. They might develop vocalizations, postures, or even scent signals to convey information about food threats or social status. So follow me could eventually evolve into, hey, look what I found, mm -hmm. or danger ahead. Precisely as these communication systems become more sophisticated, yeah. they could form the basis for social structures within the colony. Mm. Certain individuals might emerge as leaders guiding the group, right. while others take on roles related to defense or raising young. So this seemingly simple behavior could be the foundation of a complex social web. It's a fascinating possibility, and it highlights the power of observation. Yeah. By studying even commonplace behaviors, we can gain insights into social complexity and evolution. That's so cool. It makes you wonder what other hidden depths are out there waiting to be discovered. Right. We'll continue to explore this fascinating world of ground squirrel behavior in part three. Welcome back. It, it's amazing how much we've unpacked about these Colombian ground squirrels just from observing this one following behavior. It really is. It shows how even these seemingly simple behaviors can give us clues about complex social dynamics and evolutionary adaptations. You know, as we've been talking, I keep thinking about how this following behavior isn't just limited to squirrels. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Like we see it in so many other animal species, too. Exactly. Like think about mother ducks with their ducklings yeah, yeah. or geese with their goslings all trailing behind. Right. They all have these variations of following behavior and each one serves that same purpose yeah. of keeping the young safe and teaching them what they need to know to survive. Like a universal language of parenthood in the animal kingdom. Exactly. It really shows how important social bonds and parental care are for the survival of a species. Okay, so... We've covered how following works, right. the reasons why it evolved, yeah. and we even talked about how it changes as the pups get older. Uh -huh. But before we wrap up, I'd love to go back to that idea you mentioned earlier okay. about how this following behavior could be more than just a way to keep the pups safe. Oh, yeah. The idea that following in ground squirrels could be like a first step toward more complex social structures. Exactly. It's such an intriguing idea. Mm -hmm. Could this simple act of following actually lead to the development of things like hierarchies yeah. and complex communication systems within the colony? It's definitely possible, you know, because even in its simplest form, following already involves communication. Right. Even yeah. if it's mainly visual, the mother signals yeah. and the pups respond. So it's like a basic form of signaling that could be built upon. Exactly. And as these pups grow and start interacting with each other more and more within the colony, yeah. it's not hard to imagine how this basic signaling could evolve. Right. Like they might start using vocalizations or specific postures huh. or even scent signals. To communicate different things. Exactly. To let each other know about food sources or potential threats or even their social standing in the group. It's so like follow me could eventually become something like, hey, check out this awesome nut I found. Uh -huh. Exactly. Or watch out, there's a predator over there. Right. And as those communication systems get more and more complex, yeah. it could set the stage for more intricate social structures within the colony. Mm -hmm. So certain squirrels might become leaders and guide the group to the best food or shelter. Right. While others might focus on defending the colony or raising the young. Wow. So this seemingly simple behavior could really be the seed for a whole complex social web. Yeah, it's a fascinating thought, and it just goes to show how much we can learn from observation. Right. By carefully studying even the most ordinary animal behaviors, yeah. we can uncover these amazing insights into how social complexity and evolution work. Well said. It makes you wonder what other secrets are hidden in plain sight. I know, right? Every creature, no matter how small, yeah. has a story to tell and something to teach us. Well, that brings our deep dive into the world of Colombian ground squirrel following behavior to an end. We've gone from those burrows in Montana to the grand scheme of evolution. Yeah. And we've seen how a simple act of following can reveal so much about animal communication, right. social structures, mm -hmm. and even the very nature of parental care. That's amazing. So the next time you see a mother duck with her ducklings or a squirrel with her pups, take a second to appreciate the beauty and complexity of these everyday miracles. I agree. Always remember there's more to discover, yeah. more to learn, Always. and more to share. So keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep diving deep into the fascinating world all around us. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive, and until next time, happy exploring.